And welcome back to Digital Trends Live. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Nibbler. It's Friday. It's time for Tech Briefs. And to do so, we of course have Ken Young from Flipboard joining right now. We're going to try to recap some of the biggest stories in tech in the last week. And there is a lot. Ken, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Um, and we've had breaking news today that we'll be talking about here during this segment too. Uh, but to start off, kind of going back in the week, there's been so many announcements when it comes to the television streaming wars. And we're going to talk about a couple of them. One, though, to start off with that uh, failed. We actually have finally somebody who's leaving the streaming war race, and that's Sony PlayStation View. I happen to be a View subscriber. Apparently, there's not that many of us, so it didn't work out very well. Uh, I liked the platform, but they decided they're going to bail out of it because of how expensive it's getting for all of that content. And you can understand why, now that you know that, seeing how much money is being spent on all these other services. Like, you have to spend a lot to get into these streaming wars, and HBO Max is the one that made some big announcements this week. What were some of the things that you were most excited about with it? So HBO Max, look, I, I, we we knew it was going to be priced at about fifteen dollars. That was uh, that's no big no big surprise. Uh, but of course, that's it's coming at a time when everybody and their uncle and their aunt uh, is launching a streaming service. As you recall, last week I announced my streaming service called Ken Plus. That's right. Uh, that'll be coming out <laughs> in twenty twenty sometime. Uh, but the, but uh, uh, what? Uh, Warner Media's a, a HBO Max is at, is launching in May. That's a little bit uh, later than Disney and Apple TV Plus. Uh, Apple TV Plus, which launched uh, today. Uh, so look, they have a huge catalog of everything uh, that's available for on HBO Max. You have everything, all the all the stuff from HBO, and you're also going to have uh, uh, original content from any of the Warner Media catalog. Uh, more than ten thousand hours of content. That's what they're that's what they're boasting. Plus, uh, original series from uh, uh, like prequels for Game of Thrones, uh, uh, Rick and Morty, obviously West Wing, uh, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, those type of things. Uh, Friends will be on there as well. So this is going to be a, a, an extensive catalog. Uh, so I think in terms of the, the what they have available in terms of their library compared to everyone else, HBO Max is probably going to do very well. Uh, yeah. It's very confusing though in terms of how you're going to be able to get how you're going to be able to watch it some people will be able to get it for free but there's obviously caveats in terms of are you an AT&T Uverse subscriber are you uh, using HBO and through an AT&T provider but you won't be able to get it right now if you are using a uh, a cable provider uh, beyond uh, AT&T so this so if you're yeah, Comcast yeah. you're out of luck so uh, but there's there's uh, there's some interesting stuff that's going on with HBO Max. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, as far as the content, like you said, they, they've got some good stuff that's going to be on there. There's always the worry, I would think, for HBO, because they're using that HBO branded name. Right. And that we're kind of all used to. It's premium television shows. You know, some movies, but really it's the television shows that, that have always been really good. So you throw this into the mix now. Now it's all just part of this massive HBO universe. You could start to water some of that down, but they're definitely... You know, they're, they're spending the money on it, so maybe that won't be as a big of a concern, but they're kind of leveraging, I feel like, that HBO name to, to get people in. Oh, premium, premium. Um, but they are spending money for it, and there's a new Game of Thrones series, you know, like we were saying before, uh, House of the Dragon, which is going to be coming out. So that's, that's what they're doing. So you have HBO Max. That's coming out later this year. Today, as you mentioned, Apple TV Plus is out. Uh, definitely less expensive, but far less content. Uh, $4.99 a month. Um, there's various bundle packs that are, that are being thrown around out there. I think if you're a student, you have Apple Music, then you can get Apple TV Plus thrown in. I'm sure they're going to figure out some other ones. But um, right now, out today, a couple of big, big shows as far as they're concerned, at least big budget, because they're, they're getting in some big stars. The Morning Show, Jennifer Aniston, Steve Carell, uh, Reese Witherspoon, certainly a, a big name show whether it lasts or not i don't know but that seems to be what apple tv plus is really going for is spending big money getting big names and then hoping eh, content sure hopefully hopefully it works well uh, of course remember though that apple tv apple is coming at it with no library whatsoever yeah now you look at everybody else they have they have legacy uh uh, uh shows that they can that they can bank on even disney i mean they're they can pull from abc espn uh they're disney uh even Warner Media has a whole bunch of them. Warner Media for HBO Max, they have a ton of original content, like stuff that they've that, that have already uh, uh, pre-run, but they don't have a lot of that original stuff, like truly original, like created just for HBO Max right now. But they will. 
Now, it, now if you look at Apple TV+, Plus, that's on the flip side. They're banking on uh, creating original content themselves right yeah. from the get-go because that, that's what they have to do. Uh, and, but you look at what with NBC Peacock, that's what they. Uh, that's what when they when it launches. Uh, just r- r- reported today. That's actually going to. Uh, it, it's reported that from CNBC that that's going to be available for free. Uh, an ad uh, an ad free version may be available for free for a lot more people beyond uh, those that are Comcast subscribers and those mm. that are cable subscribers. So, but NBC has a huge catalog as well that it that it can re- that it can rely on versus Apple TV Plus. Well, it's, that's going to be interesting, yeah, to see with that. I, I hadn't even heard about that one. So there's so much that's happening going on with the streaming, the television streaming wars, and this is what's just happened this week. So Apple TV+, Plus, like you said, with their original content, maybe they get some hits out of it, and that would certainly drive people to it. Uh, you have Disney Plus next week, which is what we're going to be talking about. Well, wait, next week? No, two weeks, November 12th. <laughs> Forgot what day it was. Uh, it's coming <laughs> up fast, though. So within two weeks, we'll Hurry have up, that. Disney. So much going on. Um, so that's that's just our streaming TV war block. Let's talk a little bit about some hardware, another big news, and, and continue on with Apple, uh, making the surprise announcement of the AirPods Pro this week. We had heard rumors that maybe this would happen. There were previous rumors that it was going to be in the spring, but then, boom, they just brought it out, and here's your brand new AirPods, the AirPods Pro, uh, definitely with some improvements over what the other ones had. Uh, from our reviews, just talking about them, because we've already got them, reviewed them, the sound is good. Uh, the waterproofing, something that a lot of people wanted with these Apple AirPods um, that wasn't previously there. I think the silicone tips to actually get that that better noise canceling, um, that's a huge improvement. So, so far, I mean, the reviews are pretty great on what these are themselves. Are you an AirPods user? No, I'm, I'm, okay. uh, I'm not. I'm, uh, I'm an Android user, so, uh, you know, AirPods don't necessarily work for me, but uh, the, I guess the equivalent for me are the uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy earbuds, yeah. which aren't that bad. Uh, but look, I think what everybody, everyone's uh, Christmas list got a little bit longer now uh, with the with the launch of these AirPods Pro, uh, which is uh, was something that people want. It's it's more of a premium version. It's two hundred fifty dollars. It's right. available now. Uh, the, I think everyone wanted them. If beyond all the other things that you've named, it's be, it has noise cancellation. That's yeah. that's yeah. what everyone wants. That's what everyone's been been looking forward to. Uh, I think there's been some question about in terms of uh, the the how how uh, how much can it be repaired? Uh, it should it get damaged? Uh, of course, now the the tips that come out uh, where the microphone are that is much much shorter. So in case you drop it, there's uh, a down you know onto the onto the subway track or whatever. It's going to be that much more difficult to to grasp to to grab it and 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 save it. So uh, for two hundred fifty dollars, you got to be even uh, you got you got to be more careful uh, right. with with your AirPods, so you don't actually you know lose them and and shell out you know another two hundred fifty dollars. But I think this is something the reviews have been pretty good. Uh, yeah, you're you're right. It's water resistant, uh, which means that you know if you want to do it, uh, wear it more for exercise, but uh, Apple advises you not to go swimming with it. So it's not IP68 yeah. uh, resistant, similar to your to your iPhone. So don't take it out into the ocean and hope that you know you'll be able to you know listen to music underwater because that's not going to happen. Yeah, it's also going to fall out if you go into the ocean with those two. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, so at least though, that's a step up. So, two hundred fifty bucks. Uh, check out all the reviews of that. We've got them at Digital Trans and Flipboard. You can read all about all of this. Um, last thing we want to do is just briefly touch on the big announcement today. And we had planned on actually talking about this as a rumor for next week, but it happened already. Google bought Fitbit. So this was another one of those things where we'd heard earlier this week that they'd made an offer. And a lot of times with those deals, you know, somebody makes an offer, it's really low. There's a counter offer, it could go on for months or nothing could come of it. But this actually went through. So it was $2.1 billion, I believe, uh, yep. that Google bought Fitbit, buying that name, buying the reputation and buying some of that hardware to actually enter in to the smartwatch race and compete with Apple ostensibly, which is a big move. Oh yeah, sure. I, I think and everything co- comes back to Apple these days. I think all the, all three of our stories today have, have come back to Apple. Uh, so why why not this one? Look, a- Apple uh, is a- the Apple Watch is one of the top uh, wearables in the mar- in the market today, and, and Google has been trying to figure out what to do in their wearable space. They have a a fitness uh, uh, software. They have their uh, Fit uh, the Google Fit. They also have a, a health uh, product. They also have w- a, a Wear OS. So. They they have all of the software, but they need to uh, find ways to to make it work better with with hardware. Uh, and look, Fitbit's uh, watches are are, fair, are pretty go- pretty cool. Um, 
their I believe their Versa did uh, has performed very well. So yeah. I think that I mean, who knows what's going to happen in terms of the integration. A lot of details have to be uh, revealed. Uh, but I think this is going to be a, a compelling ta uh, case in terms of seeing what Google can do with it. Google, if you recall, uh, months ago had bought uh, Fossil's uh, intellectual property when it came to come to, when it comes to smartwatch technology. So this is only going to compound that. And of course, with, with the acquisition of Fitbit, uh, Google also gets the, the technology from Pebble, which Fitbit bought uh, a, right. about a couple of years ago. So I, I'm kind of interested to see how this how this works because I'm I, look at, with, when it comes to Android, a lot of the wearables are kind of like very de uh, de uh, uh, decentralized. It's very similar to like the Android smartphones. But it, so this is what we're probably maybe we, may, we might get like a Pixel uh, smartwatch, which I'd be very interested to get something that, yeah. that really uh, makes uh, all of our activity, our fitness tracking and, and health information seamless. Uh, interesting to note in the press release that Fitbit uh, 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 produced uh, following the acquisition, they said the data from Fitbit will not be used by Google in ads. So they yeah, sought yeah. to reassure consumers that, look, you're not going to your, your data is not going to be monetized against. Which is a, which is a, a a good preemptive statement to say when it comes down to that, and and think they kind of need to say that too just to to alleviate any concerns. But it's uh, I'm sure there's a lot more information that's going to be coming out. So Google buying Fitbit, and that's wrapping up some of the big stories in tech this week. There is always so much every week. We try to keep you up to date. And if you're watching live on our uh, video show on Digital Trends Live, I want to remind you there's a podcast version of this. So hit subscribe to that wherever you find podcasts. Go subscribe to Tech Briefs. And Ken, as always, thanks so much. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Subscribe to Ken Plus coming soon.